suggest, as Videodrome has fallen into the wrong hands. The special effects of this media horror film show the tactile promptings of TV to originate with a broadcast signal transferable to a videotape of an episode and then to any TV screen and, as you remember, the entire set upon which it is played. The throbbing cassette, the undulating cabinet, inhaling and exhaling speaker grills and ballooning screen into which one may bury one's head reach a kind of epiphany of murderous tactility when the TV screen stretches like a plastic film conforming to a fist pointing a gun at the protagonist whom is then shot. The film is a parable of immersion into a virtual universe, played at first as induced hallucinations, but then graphically and brutally spectacularized as a predatory tangibility. Videodrome is delivered by a not incidental content, snuff films, that parodies the standard connection of electrotactility with eroticism while showing that the content produces death on the level of form as well. Death from the signal and its effects on the technologies of video and television. When McLuhan changed his mind about pop culture from the 50s to the 60s, his multimodal sensory understanding of TV's tactility opened a passage to a more general sense of haptic space in which an optical sense assumes non-optical functions and more generally tactile opens out to haptic. The implications of this shift have had profound effects in architecture, for instance, with the theorization of a haptic horizon realized through hypersurfaces of screens functioning as walls and ceilings and floors, one of the first being Fremont Street in Las Vegas. Uh, all those other pixel topological structures that you see in sort of entertainment areas. Or liquid architectures without horizontal floors or all around grounds, eschewing the distinction between feet and eyes. Or a proprioceptive surround, uh, the skin of culture or smooth spaces. We live in the era of the 65 inch wide flat screen, uh, just announced by Sharp this month, uh, LCD TV at the end of the cathode ray tube's dominance of the field. The new screens are emerging in domestic, commercial, and public spaces, the so-called plasma sets, uh, which are closer to uh, CRTs than LCDs, and organic light-emitting diode technologies, which are up next. Nothing of the tactile or the haptic seems to have been lost in the dying days of the reign of the cathode ray tube, Although after the ray gun, the scanning finger is irradiated into high energy electron beams, charging plasma gas, exciting xenon and neon atoms, which in turn release light photons along electrodes strung across the pixelated screens. Address and display electrodes distribute the light horizontally and vertically, lighting each pixel individually. Back to the ledger where the column ruled perception. Here emerges the possibility of media surface environments, of new televisual lands, mediascapes, of wearable and wrappable television, like advertisements around buses, and pliable jumbotrons blowing in the wind. The science fiction vision of wall-to-wall -wall TV is upon us. If we pass by way of Cronenberg into this space via the throbbing, stretching, invasive screen, we are again struck by the immediacy of promise and compromise. Haptic space has been infested by surveillance and simulation in simvalence environments. Instead of seeing through surfaces of exposing appearances, in simvalence the gaze is distributed across vanishing surfaces, vanishing in the respect that they are no longer media appearances, no longer obviously screens at all, but rather unsupported surfaces without frames or furniture or legs or cords even. The destiny of SDTV, EDTV, and of course HDTV, from the standard to the enhanced to the hyper sharp and super detailed is the shrinking of the hardware toward the already accomplished minimization of depth and height, uh, depth and weight, sorry. This is the fantasy of perfected simvalence or surveillance. Uh, this little quote here from Bill Bogard. 
With simulation, we move from the problem of the transparency of the medium, the surface, to a kind of pure transparency. What's visible is all that's visible. From a stage of mediated seeing to the immediacy to the ecstasy of perception, end quote. The medium is no longer the message because it has been eliminated in a frightening total transparency of the hypersensitive smart virtual environment. Whether in the end this is more horrifying than Cronenberg's vision is probably undecidable. For as the short-lived short and much-loved prescient new wave band, the Buggles, told us, we can't rewind, we've gone too far into the future anterior of contact which is already accomplished because there is nothing more than that all the time, everywhere, already, without the possibility of its negation. And in this, there is a certain kind of horror. Is TV still sticky in the age of a digital McLuhan? The new TVs scramble the hot and cool distinction. Post-fuzz, after static and cool noise and ghosts. It's all promotional high definition and micro focus, which is hot and not very involving. At the same time, the tactile qualities that McLuhan admired in his analog musings on the CRT set are evident in the little ripples of pixel juice that a pointing finger creates upon contact with mushy LCD screens on laptops and elsewhere. There is a virtual liquidity in name Brands like Sharp's Aquos, a deviant Latin term floating between aqua and aqueous and aquosus. And effect right there on the surface of the hardware itself. Just po poke it, you'll find out. Probe it, as it were. Such effects are, as we've learned from Cronenberg, the building blocks of media horror. And we need look no further than Gore Verbinski's remake of The Ring to find a contemporary example of the video cassette as vector of fear and illness, and the screen as a transmutation device through which images pass and acquire material form, especially houseflies and creepy little girls. This kind of tactility doesn't seem to be connected with the salutary soothing of contact, conduction, and communication. Perhaps that, that means that telephasis is just dysfunctional. The screen skin may be too porous and moist because everybody knows that you get bad results by mixing water with your electronics. Indeed, what seems most horrifying is that the skin of the screen may be an extension of the human sensorium and thus surpass appearance, being without frames or other supports, in a continuum of recording surface and perceptual experience, the parameters of which are already written, already coded, so that Tactility is an involvement that is so lucid and so detailed, but uneventful. McLuhan and Carpenter contrasted visual with acoustic space on the basis of the former's boundaries and the latter's abundant lacks. Lack of locality, lack of fixity, lack of precision. But I'm suggesting that a digital McLuhan in the post-CRT era is never out of focus or even snowy always precise, super fine, tactually available, yet unbearable. And ironically, a digital McLuhan today is delivered by flat media surfaces that mock his separation of flat pictorial and spherical acoustic spaces by delivering the so-called experience of tactual acoustic space in a flat mode. And in a hyper hotness, that overdefines and steals away perception by defining it in advance, front-loading the event so that it will already have taken place. In this nightmare, the luxury of touch is empty to fullness, contact is simulated, and communication hypertrophies. A digital McLuhan is possessed of a terrible clarity. Sticky TV fingers leave no messy traces. <laughs>